Good morning, and thank you for joining us for the 2021 Global Convening of the Innovation Lab for Legume Systems Research. My name is Augustine Obo, soil scientist with Kansas State uh, University. Today, I'll be sharing with you uh, some information on our project looking at sustainable intensification of dual purpose cowpea varieties for enhanced food and fodder in Senegal. This is a collaborative research effort between scientists at Kansas State University, including myself and Dr. Vera Prasad, and our colleagues at Senegalese Agricultural Research and Extension Services. The research efforts in Senegal is being led by Dr. Ali Fayel. Our project is focused on cowpea, and cowpea, as we know, is a very important grain legume crop that is well adapted to the savanna regions in West Africa. Cowpea is normally grown as an intercrop with uh, cereal grains like millet and sorghum. Unfortunately, yields of local varieties are very low, ranging between 300 to 400 kilograms per hectare. Uh, because of this, there have been a lot of efforts looking at plant breeding to get new varieties with greater yield and also drought tolerance. One of the research efforts uh, looking at uh, improvement in cowpea production is the development of dual purpose cowpea varieties. Uh, the picture on my right is an uh, example of a dual purpose cowpea variety. These varieties have stay green uh, property at maturity. As you can see here, all the above ground biomass of this variety is looking green. So this increases the amount of forage available for livestock that could be used as a livestock feed. And also because they are green, we have green leafy materials, the forage quality is significantly improved. And this is very important for the integrated crop livestock systems that we have in the savanna regions of West Africa. So the overall goal of this project is to look at sustainable intensification of agro-pastoral systems and how we can increase adoption of high yielding dual purpose cowpea varieties and also provide agronomic management practices that will support cowpea production. We have two main objectives. The first objective is to evaluate the dual benefits of cowpea varieties to increase both grain and forage quality and quantity. And the second objective was to conduct a trade-off assessment for cowpea markets with particular focus on trade, uh, trade-offs and synergies between grain and forage production in areas that are traditionally pastoralist compared to areas that traditionally grow cowpea. This project is focused in Senegal, uh, particularly the Senegalese peanut basin. We are looking at uh, three precipitation gradients, uh, the Loga region, all the way to the Kafrin region that gets about 700 millimeters of rainfall. These three regions were selected because of their proximity to the feed the future zone of impact. This region also is the major cowpea production area in Senegal. So these three regions has most of the cowpea production in Senegal. In addition, uh, ISRA has research facilities that are located within this region. So we have access to these facilities to use in the conduct of our research. In terms of methods, we are using the mother baby trial approach, which is a bi-directional learning approach between scientists, farmers and extension agents. Uh, last year in 2020, we started these experiments by conducting uh, crop variety trials across three locations in Senegal. We have five new cowpea varieties. We also included two older varieties, example Yassin, and then we have six dual purpose cowpea varieties, including Bambe, uh, Moredi, uh, Dogama. And we also have seven dual purpose cowpea varieties that we got from University of California uh, cowpea breeding program. We are looking at two fertility levels, whether we apply fertilizer to boost cowpea production or no fertilizer at all. Then we are also looking at residue management, whether we incorporate the cowpea residue after harvest or 
will remove all the residue and what will be the impact on nutrient availability for the subsequent crop. These pictures were taken about, the picture on my left was about two to three weeks after cowpea has been planted in August. And then the picture on my right is one month uh, after cowpea has been planted. And these uh, pictures are looking very good because last year we have a significant amount of rainfall that helps in improving cowpea productivity. We are also looking at genotype by environment by management study that we are conducting at these three locations. We, this is a split split plot uh, design. Uh, the main plots are sole or intercrop cowpeas. Then we also have 10 cowpea varieties as the subplot factor. These 10 cowpea varieties include the five new varieties that have been released. We also have two older varieties that are included in this research and we are adding three varieties of cowpea from the material that we got from uh, University of California. Then we have five agronomic treatments, which are basically soil fertility management. We are looking at a control where we apply 30 kilogram uh, phosphorus. We are also having a treatment of 30, 30 MPK. And then we have a treatment where we are applying 2.5 tons per hectare manure and 30 kilogram nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium per hectare. So we are looking at how these management practices affect cowpea production. The picture to my left is one block of these uh, treatments. So the first uh, block you will see a sole cowpea treatment and behind that we have uh, the intercrop uh, treatment. So this year we will be rolling out the baby trials. Uh, this is kind of an on-farm research based off from the results from last year. So the treatment that will be compared will be farmer practice to our dual purpose cowpea varieties. We are going to recruit about 100 farmers near each mother trial. And this will be done with the help of extension agents. So we are going to take into consideration the gender of the farmers that will be recruited, ethnic uh, balance. We also make sure there's a lot of youth involvement in this uh, research. So the mother baby trial in this case, producers are able to see what is happening on the mother trial on station at the particular location and compare uh, what is happening in the mother trial to uh, the trial that is being conducted on farm by the producer himself. In terms of data collection, we are going to collect data on grain yield, forage yield. We also measure grain quality and forage quality in both uh, the baby and mother trials. In addition, the baby trials, we are going to do cooking time uh, test assessment. We also uh, look at seed color and nutrient density. We also take socioeconomic data uh, from the producers. Uh, we will also take surveys on cowpea forage markets, and this data will be used for trade off analysis between dual purpose cowpea and local varieties. On the mother trial side, we will take data on leaf area index, soil water content, chlorophyll indices. We also measure soil nutrient availability, uh, take crop phenology data that will be helpful in conducting uh, modeling work in later part of the study. And then we also conduct economic analysis for both the mother trials and the baby trial. We are still compiling the data that we collected from this field, but I would like to share some uh, preliminary data from this study. So the graph on my left side is forage yields uh, from these varieties, cowpea varieties in Bombay. And the X axis is cowpea varieties, and then the Y axis is our forage yields. Uh, the last bar, the last bar is Yasin, which is the older variety. As you can see from here, yields of most of the new varieties were greater than Yasin, which is the older variety. When you go to the other location, Bali, we did, even though we did not see any significant difference in terms of forage yield between the treatments, uh, Yasin still produced uh, the lowest yield compared to the other varieties. 
This graph show 2020 forage yield at Bombay. Here I'm showing more uh, varieties on um, the exercise. So we're showing our five new varieties plus three other uh, varieties that we had this year. And then the last two bars are the two older varieties, Malak, Malak, and then Yassin. As we can see from here, the yields of most of the new copy varieties were significantly greater than the older variety you are seeing. And also Leona produced significantly greater forage yield compared to the other varieties. So we are seeing some interesting results that some of the varieties are doing very well. So this is very promising that we will be able to identify some uh, dual purpose copy varieties that could be used by producers to boost both grain and forage uh, production. In terms of capacity building, the mother baby trials provide a very good opportunity to train both extension agents and farmers. The picture on my left is a typical production field where they are growing local varieties. These local varieties you see at the point of physiological maturity, they try to um, they try to share their leaves, and they are also uh, the leaves also turn yellow. Or brown, so the forage productivity is very low. Also, this uh, local variety doesn't have vigorous growth, so you can see a lot of weed pressure compared to the picture on my right, which is a dual purple scalpy variety who tend to stay green at the point of maturity and it has very vigorous growth, so it covers a lot of surface area, reducing the amount of light on the soil surface, and that reduces the amount of weeds. Uh, in the plot. So this is very significant. It can help in reducing um, the cost of weeding and that can save the producer money if you have a dual purpose variety that has very vigorous growth. We also training uh, graduate students. Uh, we recruited uh, one PhD student and, and one MSc student this year. We advertised this widely uh, in Senegal. We had about 15 applicants for the MSc, 15 applicants for the PhD, and then the postdoc, we have four applicants. We set up a panel of four scientists from ISTRA and screen the applicants. So we, after screening, we, cut, uh, we shortlisted five candidates for each category and we interviewed them via Zoom. So based on the interview that I did uh, with Dr. Faye and myself, we were able to select uh, candidates for the MS, PhD, and the postdoctoral position. So the selected candidate for the PhD position is Mr. Tolkani, who will be trained in Senegal. Mr. Bruno for MSc, he will be trained at KSU. And our postdoctoral associate is Dr. Aplo. All these candidates have been informed of the outcome of the interview, and they will be soon, they will be soon joining uh, our research efforts in Senegal. In terms of expected outcome, we are hoping that by the end of this project, we will be able to use dual purpose cowpea varieties to sustainably intensify agro-pastoral systems in West Africa. There will also be improvement in smaller holder farmer income. We are able, we will also be able to increase adoption of dual purpose grain and forage cowpeas in Senegal and surrounding West African countries. We are also hoping there will be improvement in human nutrition with the adoption of nutrient-dense dual purpose scalpy varieties. Finally, you will be able to train and build institutional capacity in cropping systems through graduate student training and also training of producers and extension agents using the mother baby trials. I would like to thank uh, the USAID and the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for the game system research for funding uh, this project. I would like to end here and thank you very much for listening.